Welcome everybody to another edition of the Nick Saban Show along with the head coach of the Crimson Tide. I'm Chris Stewart. Coach, congratulations. Very special day in college football when Alabama and Tennessee meet and you win again 58-21. Well, it makes a lot of people happy in Alabama and that's what makes me happy and it makes our players really happy. They enjoyed the celebration in the locker room. They enjoy all the traditions of this game and uh, I think that, you know, coming here and sort of getting off to a great start and getting ahead 28 nothing in the first quarter was uh, really a sign of how, you know, our players wanted to respond to the game. This atmosphere was really good at kickoff. It was loud and as you said, 28 points. But tell us about the importance of your team coming out and getting that score right from the beginning to quiet things a bit. Well, I think you always tell your players, you, you know, when you play on the road and you know you're playing in a place like this where there's 102,000 people and they've got great fans and great enthusiasm and knowing this is a rivalry game, that you got to make the people sit on their hands. You know, don't give them anything to cheer about. Don't let the crowd be a factor in the game. And even if it becomes a factor in the game, you got to play the next play. You got to keep focused and uh, on what you got to do to win the next play so that they don't get momentum in the game. And our players did a pretty good job of that. All right, coach, let's get into the first half highlights. Jam packed as you'd expect, 102,055 fans on hand. Here comes the Crimson Tide. To a claps, gets the snap, stands in, looks, everybody's covered, pumps, pulls it down, everybody's covered, looks, finds an opening in the corner, Judy is there, touchdown Alabama, touchdown Alabama, Tua to Jerry Judy, Tua looked right, Tua looked left, Tua looked up, Tua looked down, he looked in the corner, there was Jerry Judy, 11 yards to the touchdown. from their own 25, he double claps his hands, pressure, ball is loose, picked up by Alabama and covered by the Tide at the two yard line, Christian Miller will cover the football. Second and goal from the three. Irv Smith comes in closer to Tua. Here now the fake give to Josh, who again takes it on the second reach, and he's in for a touchdown. Behind Jedrick Wills and Jonah Williams, Josh Jacobs on a second reach to Tua, gets the handoff and carries it in for a three-yard touchdown. Play action fake, the throw is knocked out of midair and careens all the way back. Anthony Jennings. First and ten, clapping of the hand, play action fake to Najee, Tua stands in, throws long, waddle behind the defense, right side 30, 15, 10, 5, how are you? Another one, 77 yards on the instantaneous touchdown, Tua to Jalen Waddle. Bama's up 28-7, handoff Jacobs, near side of the 10 to the 
Jacobs up the middle. Touchdown, Alabama. Two-yard run. Josh Jacobs, and I'll tell you, when you have guys like Leatherwood and Wills controlling the line of scrimmage, two-yard run is, is, is like a routine play. Bama has been controlling the trenches. The single setback. Callaway is wide left. Here now the snap to press. Stands in a BB across the middle. Catch is made on the slant for a touchdown. They won points before the half. Here's Tua. He looks. He'll find a man open. Touchdown. The aforementioned. Touchdown Alabama with 15 seconds to go until intermission. Well, Coach, they stopped you on third down a couple of times, but your team very efficient again today. Well, I think we scored on six out of eight drives in the first half, but I think the key to the drill was we got off to a great start. Um, we got stopped a couple times, and we, we staggered on defense because we got a little confused on some of the things that they were doing that we hadn't worked on. We probably should have gone the nickel right away on it, but wanted to wait till halftime. Um, and then I think it was huge that we scored on the two-minute drive right before the half and I think made it 42-14. All right, Coach, we got more coming up. Stay with us right here on the Nick Saban Show. Coach, always love hearing from you what the message is at the half. Well, sometimes you feel like you're in control of a game and sometimes you feel like you're not. And really, the way we played in the second quarter where we started reeling on defense and they scored two touchdowns, but we always answered the bell, which was a good thing for our, with our offense. But I didn't feel like we were in control of the game. So they got the ball first in the second half, and we wanted to get off to a great start and get the safety right off the bat on the first play and then going down and score. I think that was the real key. All right, well, let's get into those second half highlights. The second half highlights are brought to you by the Ortho Sports Center at St. Vincent's, Birmingham. Care you can believe in. Raquan Davis is in on the defensive front for Alabama. Eli Wolf is now in as a fullback in an I formation. Handoff as the quarterback goes down. It goes to the running back, a safety. The quarterback was down in the end zone. That should be a safety. Here now Tua, under pressure. Gets hit as he throws, wide open. Ruggs makes the grab over the shoulder. He's at the five, he is in. Touchdown, Alabama. Second down and seven. Snap from Pierce Baker. Jalen Hurts claps his hands, gets it, back pedals, has to unload quickly, and it's thrown right into a defender as the ball was hit, as so was the quarterback. It's Kyle Phillips taking it, rumbling forward, touchdown! Second and 13 from the 21. Bama leads 51-21. Minute 14 in the third. Here's Jalen. Stands in. Steps up. Runs near side. 20. Left side. 10. 5. Finds an opening. He is in. Touchdown Alabama. 21 yards. Jalen Hurts. 
And the Crimson Tide today have scored more points against the Tennessee Volunteers than they ever have in a single ball game. And that's going to do it. And now two dear friends will meet at midfield. Nick Saban and Jeremy Pruitt. They hug warmly at midfield. They'll talk another time. Nick Saban now 15 and 0 against former staff members. Bama a winner, 58-21. Coach, everybody looks at the scoreboard and sees 58-21, but as you look back on the game, what's your assessment? Well, I like the way we finished the game in the second half. I mean, we started out really well in the second half, got a safety, got a score. All right, but we controlled the game, we controlled the line of scrimmage. Uh, we had the ball for over 18 minutes in the second half. Um, they really scored on a tip ball interception. The defense did a much better job in the second half of getting them stopped. So uh, I was really pleased with the way we finished. I think the key to the drill is now we get some rest for our players and then we focus on what we got to do to improve because we have bigger challenges in the future and it's going to be all about how we finish. We've been 8-0 at this point in the season quite a few times, uh, but it's always how you finish that makes the biggest difference and that's going to be the key again this year. We'll talk more when we come back right here on the Nick Saban Show. Coach, got off to a great start, but where was the turning point for you in this one? I think the turning point was in the second quarter because we started to reel. They scored twice. They got some momentum in the game. Their fans got in the game. But both times they scored, we answered the bell, and then we had a great two-minute drive right before the half, and that created some separation for us, and I think that really kind of was a difference in the game. We always talk to you each week on the show about a member of your coaching staff, and it's fun this year. you got so many new faces, and among those, Pete Golding. Well, Pete has been a really good addition to our staff. He's been a coordinator before, and uh, he's really a bright young coach, and uh, he's got a great family. Uh, he's a good recruiter, um, and he's made a lot of good positive contributions you know, to the defense this year, and I think the players really have great relationship with him and have grown to really respect him. All right, Maggie Hetzel goes Mercedes-Benz All Access with Pete Golding. Pete Golding, inside linebackers, Cody Vince Gordon. What are you really focusing on as a new coach with those guys, you know, really the, building the chemistry with them this right. season? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, obviously, when, when you're new coming into somewhere is they have to have the ability to trust you, you know, because if what you're speaking or what you're trying to teach, if they don't yeah. buy into it, it's just nothing you know, oh. so I do think you've got to teach everybody a little differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so identifying those things so you can help those guys. Uh, when it comes to your coaching, uh, philosophy and the way that you coach, how would you describe yourself as a coach? Uh, I think the big thing, your personality kind of comes out in your players. You know, whether it's the meeting room, whether it's individual, whatever it is, I think passion would be the biggest thing. Now, what would your players say? <laughs> Probably the same thing. Who is your funniest? Oh, man, it depends what day. Now, all of them, I think, uh, they got unique personalities, and I think they feed off each other really well. They've been close enough now, have been around each other. When one's down, the other can pick them up. So we try to focus in and zero in when we're doing it, but then when we're not, we try to have fun, you know, and they do a good job of that. Moving to Tuscaloosa, uh, you've got two sons and then a new baby girl. That's right. So the move, now the adjustment down here, how has it all been? God bless my wife. The transition to Tuscaloosa has been awesome. Two boys, you got two football players on your hands. <laughs> we'll see. I feel like I feel like it's gonna surprise you. Your daughter's gonna be the one who's most into it. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, she's already got a little Alabama cheerleading uniform. Were you ever an Alabama fan at all during the time that you well, haven't been here? In this profession, you always try to you know emulate people that are at the top and do it the best. So you know we always broke down Alabama every off season. But, you know, growing up in South Louisiana, not always a true Alabama <laughs> fan, but always a fan of how he runs the program and how they play defense. Ross Fishbarker was a great left guard and now moves to center. How difficult or what was difficult about making that move? Well, Brandon, Ross has been a really, really good player for us now for four years. And uh, he was a really good player at guard. I think when you convert to center, uh, it's always most difficult. Some guys can snap and step and still play with power. Other guys really struggle with that. Uh, Ross is a really bright guy and he was able to make the transition. But I think what people don't realize about him as a center, he makes all the line calls and he makes everybody else play better up front and he's done a really, really good job. And I think he created a lot of value for himself by moving to center this year because when you play both center and guard, I think you have more value at the next level. 
Coach, your program literally has players from all over the country. You've had them in the past from all over the world, but you got a guy that we're going to feature this week in Lester Cotton, who truly grew up in the shadows of Tuscaloosa in that Alabama campus. Well, and Lester's been an outstanding player for us and a fine young man. Um, you know, he started a lot of games around here. He got a little nicked up with an ankle, tried to play with it a week ago, uh, but he has been a really, really good contributor in the offensive line. and. You know, we're always happy to have Alabama players, especially Tuscaloosa players, who come to Alabama and have a very, very successful career. And Lester's had a very successful career on and off the field. Once again, here's Maggie talking with Lester Cotton. I'm Lester Cotton Sr. on Tuscaloosa, Alabama, offensive line. Here's Tua. Tua throws long. Has Judy behind the defense. Jerry's in struggle. What was the push and what was kind of your decision maker to come to Alabama? A lot of it had to deal with me, like, loving Alabama as a whole. Like, when I um, moved here from um, East St. Louis, Illinois, I kind of made a bond with Tuscaloosa and, like, the atmosphere of the games. I automatically felt like I was at home. What is the funniest story since you've been here in Alabama? I have to say when my freshman year, when, um, you know, Cam Robinson was here, Tim Williams and um, Ryan Anderson, it was um, one day on the field, it was a high day at camp. And like, practice just was like, you know, it was going well and it's just out of nowhere. It just, like, those guys just made like, practice like fun. Like they, you know, like, started like throwing water, you know, and like, Ryan Anderson, he just always like made jokes and you know, just like kept it positive, you know. And you know, times was, you know, hard on the field, but those guys was like, real, like my role models, especially with Kevin Robinson. So you really kind of developed how you wanted to be as a player by watching them. I say Coach Saban was like a big, you know, role model to me. Cause like on and off the field, you can like you can like tell like he he mean what he means. Like he like takes all the players and like treats us all like as one. It's like nobody is like singled out or nobody is like better than the other. We always like one and equal. Coach, in this segment, we always look at what's next, and what's next is first a deep breath and then a trip back to a familiar place for you. Well, I think, first of all, you know, our players need to look at this bye week as an opportunity to uh, get ready for the end of the season and the challenges that we have ahead and focus on improving. Uh, and we need to get more players that can contribute in a more positive way by using this extra time to sort of develop them uh, and get some of our players that are nicked up, you know, maybe some healing up time. And then I think there's a time that we need to start focusing on LSU, which is obviously the best team to me that we played all year uh, and is going to be a very challenging place to play in Baton Rouge. Uh, so this will be the true uh, test for all of us. We look forward to that, but we also celebrate this one. Congratulations on the 58-21 win over Tennessee, your 12th straight over the Vols, historic number in this series. We'll see you next time here on the Nick Saban Show. The Nick Saban Show is brought to you by Golden Flake, the official chip of the Crimson Tide, by the University of Alabama, where legends are made, and by Tiffin Motorhomes, made to move you, by Nissan, proud supporter of Crimson Tide Athletics, by Trustmark, people you trust, advice that works, by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. By Cooper Tires, roll tide on Cooper Tires. And by AT&T, the official wireless provider of the Crimson Tide.